Well, if you talk about image and advertising, if I had to resume that in two worlds, it will be three worlds. It will be wonder, passion, and freedom. Every story has a beginning and an end, but there are some stories that are meant to last forever. These are the ones that are built on dreams, values, and determination. Well, where did it start? Um, it started in a place in Marseille. My best memories are here. These stories are not meant to have an end because each one of us will carry this legend for years to come. We decided to, when they decide to do jeans, right away uh, we had a big success with, with jeans called MGA, Maurice George Armand. Where is Paul? We don't know. We opened our first stores in Bondol. It was an old fish store. The smell of the fish was so strong when we put our first jeans in a store. But it's all memories to all that because it was the best time of our life. Because everything was new for us. Everything was exciting. Everything was fun. Everything was like to work until midnight and wake up at five, who cares, or four, who cares, just go and work and have fun. We have been blessed to do all, my brothers and I, every single day what we dream to do, to love a job, love, love the opportunity to do something on our own and, and, and make it bigger and bigger and more fun and get more people around us. That is a dream that we had in France. And then when we crossed the Atlantic and we came to visit America. Everything began in 1981, when four French brothers went to America on their first real vacation outside of France. They were young, and like young people do, they were probably looking for something. Their plane landed in LA, and the four brothers began their journey. The sun of California, the beaches, the huge freeways, and of course the girls. Everything was made to strike them. We arrive, and the first hotel we go is Beverly Hilton Hotel in America, 1977. And we arrived at night. So we didn't see anything. We go from the airport to the hotel, we go to sleep. And there, we wake up in the morning and we come out on the street and we thought that the city was closed or something. There was nobody. I mean, it was like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning, not a single person walking anywhere, only cars and we didn't see one person on a sidewalk, one person on the street. We come from Marseille, where it's like a very active city. So suddenly we walk toward uh, the street of Beverly Hills in the, in the stores, and it was an incredible, incredible moment for us to see the palm trees, the houses, gorgeous, the street. You could eat on the floor, eat on the floor. And we see the American people, especially we see American girls, one more beautiful than the other, like in the movies, like in a, in a series of shows on TV in France. We don't have this kind of girls in Marseille or in Paris or anywhere, so we said, that's not real, it must be a movie or something. And it was not, it was reality. We're all singles. Then the first week or second week we go there, we go in a club called Carlos and Charlie's. I don't know if it still exists, on sunset. And then after that night, we said, we're moving to California. <laughs> we said, it cannot be that the place is so beautiful and looks so safe. The houses are gorgeous, one next to each other. The palm trees, the blue sky, the clubs, the girls. We said, this is it, we're moving. And, uh, and we moved. They suddenly fell in love with this incredible atmosphere and the opportunities waiting for them. They thought that if there is anything that they were looking for, this was definitely the right place. We didn't have a name for the company. So we find the name by a stupid thing that nobody can believe. In a billboard it says, guess, big, and very small along the billboard, what is in a new Big Mac? And one of my brothers said, that's it, we're going to call the company Guess. Nobody speak English, so, except Maurice. Maurice said, if you use the word Guess, you have to put a question mark. And that Guess became the Guess with a question mark, and Maurice put it in a red triangle. It's as simple as that. 
That was the first step. Soon, Guess became the name on their headquarters building on Olympic Boulevard, just down the street from the billboard that had inspired them. Now they had to find out their first breakthrough product. In love with Americana, the brothers chose an American icon to redefine denim fashion, a sexy, slim-fitting, stonewashed, three-zip ankle jean called the Marilyn. I wanna be kissed by you, just you, nobody else but you. I wanna be kissed. There was so much jeans in the market that the last thing that the market needed was another denim company. But we had an idea. We wanted to do something completely different from anybody else. And the inspiration came from one of the old movies from Marilyn Monroe. And I don't remember if it was a misfit or some like it hot, but it's one of these two movies in which in one of the scenes she was wearing a jean very tight and rolled up so it was really cropped just below the calf. And that gave us the idea of coming up with a very tight fitting jean, fitting jean that nobody had really before, but very, uh, like today, the skinny jeans. But this was in 82. Nobody had anything like that. And we wanted to be short, and that's why we made it at, uh, uh, come down to the ankle, above the ankle. But we made it so tight that Nobody could put the feet for the, the, their foot through. So that's why we decided to put a zipper at the bottom. And that's how the free zip came up. Defying the potential skepticism about French gentlemen making such a symbolically American product, they sent a pair of jeans and a handwritten note to selected department stores. Bloomingdale's loved the jeans and ordered 24 pairs. The unique, sexily cut style sold out within a few hours. After all, it was a matter of taste, so they mixed up a couple of good ingredients. They took the legendary glamour of Hollywood and combined it with a dash of natural French chic. But also at the time, we introduced in America the stonewash, which didn't exist. Nobody had ever heard of stonewash here. And we, we saw it in Italy. It just came up and, and we send it to all the buyers by FedEx, to all the buyers in the United States. And that's how we got our first order from Bloomingdale for 24 pair. And that was the beginning of this. Et voila. If months ago they came to LA to follow an American dream, now they were definitely living it. Once they had the product, Guess started to grow fast. Surely the Marciano brothers' sixth sense for fashion design was a driving force behind the new brand's revolutionary style. But there was still an ingredient missing in this success recipe, the Guess image. This vision was shaped from its inception in the mind of the youngest brother, Paul Marciano. It was time for Guess to be known. And of course, it was time to change the advertising world. While the company was making efforts designing new products and collections, Paul already had the glamorous world of Guess clearly embossed in his mind. This vision was inspired from the iconic beauty of movie stars from the 50s and 60s, like Brigitte Bardot and Sophia Loren. Whether black and white or color, the Guess advertising style was, and still is, instantly recognizable. Seductive people against inspiring backgrounds, hinting at a story that viewers could envision for themselves. But Paul's powerful vision was about to create something that would make Guess a real fashion icon itself. The Guess Girl. Now we are in 1982, and uh, my friend was working next to me. Her name was Leanne Niels. She was a makeup artist. And uh, she was working at the hair salon next to me. So she said, why don't we do a campaign of with a different photographer and to do in a studio what you did. She said, well, I have a friend who is a photographer. His name is Wayne Mazur, and he worked for Universal Studio. So the three of us meet, Leanne, Wayne, and me. She never done a campaign before, Leanne, but she's going to do it as a stylist. She's a makeup artist. I've never done any advertising in my life. I never studied advertising, but I know what I like if I see something. With this strong imagery, Paul Marciano created some of the most iconic images in the history of fashion advertising, for which Guess has received the industry's highest honors, including the Clio and Designers and Art Directors Awards, 
assuring Guess's place in American pop culture. Once they created a strong brand with strong image recognition, they soon understood the importance of expanding the brand in new categories in order to create a true lifestyle brand. The Marcianos continued their brand expansion as they partnered with key licensees to include watches, children's wear, eyewear, underwear, jeans wear, shoes, accessories, houseware, and a range of other products. If you create an image, and you have that image, I mean, it's logical that once you create an image, you will have a brand. And the brand is made of what you want that image to be. And if you have that, that means now you have people who will come to you and say, I would like to have a license of your brand. However, unlike most companies who suffered brand image dilution from rapid expansion using licensees, the image of Guess was only strengthened, mainly thanks to the strong relationships Guess has built with its licensees over the past 35 years. When you have a brand, you have to stay true to yourself. Everything you do, and how you do it, and where you do it, everything has to be consistent with a brand. The brand is your most valued asset that you have. This is what's gonna keep you in the market, and in existence for 50 years, 100 years, your brand is going to keep you there. That brings me now to the protection of the brand. When you have a brand, you have to be like paranoid about it and make sure that nothing come and damage the brand. And when I, when I say that, it's nothing uh, about the product. You know, you don't tamper with a product. You don't tamper with the sales. You don't tamper with the, the, the concept in those stores. We, you don't tamper with the, with the advertising, with the, with the marketing. Everything has to be geared toward enhancing the brand and not taking advantage of the brand. And that goes for us, that goes for the licenses, that goes for everybody who's touching the brand. With the success of the guest brand and the product categories, the next logical step was to diversify the business model and expand in new retail concepts that would embody different segments of the lifestyles brand. From the success in the 1980s and early 1990s, Guess Inc. launched a multi-brand portfolio including Guess 1984, Guess Kids 1984, Guess Factory 1989, Guess by Marciano 2004, Guess Accessories 2004, Guess Footwear 2006, GC 2007, G by Guess 2007, Guess Underwear 2009. How do we do that? We have everything has to be done according to the brand. And it, I keep saying it, it's not all about volume, it's not all about sales, it's about how we produce these sales. And it all starts with a the product, then it continues with the advertising and the marketing in order to bring the, make the people aware of what we're doing, how, what we're doing. And then it's in the stores and the experience that the people, our customers, get into the store, in the stores when they come to the, to, to the guest stores. Is our biggest challenge now is gonna be to keep the consistency of the brand, which means that the customer who's shopping here in California is the same customer who's gonna shop in Europe, is the same customer who's gonna go to the stores in, uh, in Eastern Europe, in Russia, in Middle East, in Asia, everywhere. People are traveling everywhere. But I want the customer to have the same experience. And in order to do that, we need to have consistency in everything, which means the message must be the same, not only about the product, but the way we are displaying the product, the way we are training the people to work in the stores, and that's what's gonna keep, that's what's gonna give us the integrity, and when I say integrity, is not just product, it's everything. While proving to be a lifestyle powerhouse in North America, Paul Marciano understood the importance of launching the brand internationally. As the company set global goals and strategies, 
Paul understood that in order to be successful in any particular market, the mindset of think global, act local had to be the underlying principle. Uh, we have, um, I would say, four different, four, four different businesses, okay? Four different brands, basically, but not really brands, because the main brand is gas, and that's the mother brand. And then we have Gas by Marciano, then we have G by Gas, we have Gas Accessories, and then there is the, 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 the factory stores, the, the, gas, the gas outlets, the gas factory stores. And in order for all the different businesses, the different divisions to do really well, we need what I call the mother brand, Gas, to be very strong and very protected and to not be tempered with. And as long as gas is going to be really strong and at the, at the right place in the market, all the other businesses are going to do very well because they're going to emulate what gas is doing. Looking back at 35 years of success and expansion, many may wonder what the future holds for Guess. Although the company continues to expand globally, many countries and territories remain uncharted. The vision is clear. The company goals are to expand in new emerging markets with a strong focus on Russia, Turkey, Northern Europe, China and Japan. The growth opportunities for Guess are everywhere. making Guess a true global company with a balanced business portfolio amongst North America and the rest of the world. It was a dream that started 36 years ago and made possible the company's monumental growth from $6 million in revenues in 1982 to $4 billion in retail sales at the end of 2016. With over 35 years of history, the possibilities are endless for the years to come, and the quest to stay relevant in today's evolving fashion world is a top priority across all our global partners and executive teams. We have to stay relevant. And how do we stay relevant? The way I put it is we have to reinvent ourselves, but at the same time, stay true to ourselves. We can never, never lose the focus of who we are and what we stand for and who is our customer and who we are serving basically and that means that there will be in the fashion industry forever there's always trends but we have to be very careful not everything is for us they are trends so we adapt the trends to our brand we don't adapt the brand to the trend so, which means that sometimes we're just going to pass on things. The image has to be preserved for guests yesterday, today, tomorrow. And the day I would not be here anymore if I don't work here anymore for whatever reason. The brand has to be always, always protected of the image that we took us 30 years to build and to continue for the next 20 years. Because if we did not have that brand, if we did not have that image, all the crises that we went through in 87, in uh, 92, in 97, in 2001, in 2008, during all the meltdown, we could have crushed and disappeared and go bankrupt. We did not because we had this most important asset of the company, of the history of the company, which was a brand, which was an image. If you start to focus and make your campaign just as a product, you would become like anybody. You can do all the campaign you want. If the product is not right, the customers will not come in your store to buy things that they don't want. So, but we had always some incredible novelty, uh, development, washes, uh, silhouette, uh, sexiness. I mean, it's, it's, it was a magic moment how gas grew and evolved one year to another, one decade to another. If I had to think about 30 years now, how the next decade would be, the decade after that would be, it would be to don't, to look at our values, 
other value, personal values card that we have, all of us. And look at the value number five, which is so important for me. Don't ever forget your roots on anything. If it's about you personally, if it's about your family, if it's about your friends, if it's about your company, if it's about your brand, don't forget your roots ever. The day you lose that, you lose your identity. We are not a product image, we are a brand image. We have created something that people are dreaming all their life to have and never achieve. That nobody can take it away. And that's the message I want to give you.